Hello fellow conspiracy theorists across time and space, this is Joseph Armstrong, and uh, I'm going to make a quick video having to do with uh, the new Bible versions and uh, Halloween. Let's get into the video. So I'm finishing up the audiobook for The Word God Will Keep It. One of the chapters coming up is called The Necromancy of West Cotton Hort. It mentions uh, um, this thing called Communion of the Saints taking place around All Saints Day, which I believe is the day... Uh, and I just googled it. That is correct. November 1st. Ken Johnson talks about in his book called uh, The uh, Ancient Origins of Modern Holidays. I'll put a link for that down in the description so you guys can check that out. It's on Amazon. Um, about Halloween. A lot of people, a lot of Christians, a lot of ex-Satanists like Bill Schneblin, they all come out very strongly against Halloween, and I agree, it has been paganized by, uh, by Satanism, by all these different cults and stuff like this, but Halloween is particularly a celebration of death today. It's also considered to be the devil's birthday, but that's not where it originated. That day, um, October 31st, was the original day for the anniversary of Noah's Flood, which makes a lot of sense because there was a great destruction of the world at that point, and one could easily see where that would come to be a uh, commemoration of death and destruction, and where that would have been paganized later on by uh, different societies and cults and stuff like this. Halloween is the day where the veil between the seen and the unseen is at its thinnest. West Cotton Hort participated in this thing called the Communion of the Saints. If you go to page uh, 298 in your hard copy, the book goes into much greater detail than I'm going to in this video. But it says, quote, This communion of saints involves a remembrance, mutual intercession, and conversation. This communication must be sharply distinguished from uh, spirit communication or uh, necromancy. The communion of the saints concerns uh, real interaction between the faithful in heaven and the faithful on earth. Oh, of course, because uh, we're talking to uh, the saints, so it, it's, must, it, it's definitely different from necromancy because in that you're talking to devils, and here we're talking to saints, okay? West Cotton Hort and many in England, uh, C.S. Lewis um, uh, claimed to have seen uh, uh, George MacDonald um, after he died, one of his mentors, and somebody claimed to have seen C.S. Lewis, I believe it was the guy that did the J.P. Phillips translation. So uh, this Communion of the Saints thing is apparently pretty popular in uh, like Anglican theology. Who knew? So I'm not sure how much of the textual data that West Cotton Hort employed was actually derived from these visitations or communions with uh, dead saints. I don't know. I know that I've heard many times that they completely ignored the patristic evidence um, and uh, the lectionaries when they went to decide what was going to be in the Bible. Um, of course, because the, the writings of the ancient church fathers does not support most of their textual changes. From uh, page 299 for you guys, this is from The Life and Letters of Brooke Foss Westcott by his son. There are absolutely no ellipsis marks. The subject, Communion of the Saints, too, is one very dear to himself. He had an extraordinary power of realizing this communion. It was his delight to be alone at night in the great cathedral, for there he could meditate and pray in full sympathy with all that was good and great in the past. I have been with him there on a moonlit evening when the vast building was haunted with strange lights and shades and the ticking of the great clock sounded like some giant's footsteps in the deep silence. Then he had always abundant company. 
once a daughter in later years met him returning from one of his customary meditations in the solitary darkness of the chapel at Ackland Castle. And she said to him, quote, I expect you do not feel alone, end quote. Oh no, he said, it is full. And as he spoke, his face shone with one of his beautiful smiles. End quote. Bill Schneblin used to be a uh, spiritualist minister, a medium, and uh, every once in a while he would channel or commune with somebody that was great from the Christian past, say uh, maybe Peter or Jesus or somebody like this. If you're channeling something calling itself Jesus, it's not Jesus. It's something else. It's another Jesus. If you're seeing someone claiming to be Jesus, it could be a hologram. We'll get into that in future videos. The Bible and King James himself exhorted us not to put faith and, and to not even listen to apparitions because we have the Word of God fully revealed in the Scripture. So what further need have we of witness? He has testified himself. We don't need to see a 3,000 foot Jesus in the clouds to know what we should do with our lives. We have the Bible. Question of the day. Jesus or an angel from heaven appears to you at some point in time and starts telling you uh, something. Will your response be uh, trick or treat? Food for thought. Have a great night. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Bible Version Conspiracy. If you guys enjoyed the content, don't forget the like button down below. And if you could hit the subscribe button as well, that'll keep you updated on more videos that I make. And it'll also help this channel grow. Anything that I would have forgotten or any notes for this episode, I'll put down in the description box. You guys can check that out. And if you guys have any questions for me or any comments, you guys can leave those down in the comment area. I will be seeing all of those and I'll be responding. Thanks again for sticking around to the end of the video. And don't forget to read your King James Bible like the devil's after it because it truly is a Bible version conspiracy. Thanks again for watching and we will talk soon.